nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Electron has left the pad at Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1 and is soaring sky high on its mission for Capella. The first milestone the rocket will pass through is Max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure, the crossover point between dynamic pressure increasing with speed and static pressure decreasing with altitude. It causes the most amount of physical stress on the vehicle, so it's one our team watches out for. That call out should be coming from Mission Control shortly, so let's listen in. Max Q. And Electron has cleared Max Q. The rocket is performing nominally so far, now up to 2,100 kilometers an hour at, in speed as it soars past 20 kilometers in altitude. Occurring next will be three events across Electron that will happen within seconds of each other. The first is Miko, or main engine cutoff. The power pack for Stage 1, consisting of the nine Rutherford engines, will throttle down and then shut off completely, ahead of the second event which is called out as Stage Separation. That's when the second stage separates away from the first stage. A few seconds later, the third event happens, which is ignition of the second stage's Rutherford engine to carry on with the mission. You'll be able to see those three events happen in real time from the onboard camera streams, and those callouts should be coming from Mission Control shortly. Fifteen seconds to staging. Entered burnout detect mode. Miko confirmed. Stage separation confirmed. And stage two ignition confirmed. So a successful Miko stage separation and second stage ignition there for Electron. Telemetry data for that second stage shows it's moving at uh, more than 7,800 kilometres an hour, now just about to pass 100 kilometres above Earth. There should be no blockers for the next milestone, which is fairing jettison, and that's when Electron's nose cone separates and falls away in preparation for the end of the mission. We might see those two halves falling away on the screen as well, so let's keep an eye out for that. Guidance is nominal. HV battery discharge, hold a nominal. Fairing jettison confirmed. There it goes. We heard the call from Mission Control that fairing uh, separation has completed and introduced the Capella payload to space. The mission is now past 150 kilometres in altitude as we make our way to today's orbit with the Rutherford engine powering Electron's second stage at speeds of more than 9,700 kilometres per hour. Now at 4 minutes and 30 seconds into the mission, we have a couple of minutes to go until our next mission milestone. That will be the battery hot swap on the second stage, currently expected to take place at the T plus 6 minute 30 mark. 
Meanwhile, Electron continues to perform nominally on its way to orbit for Capella. The payload is headed to a 615 km circular Earth orbit where it will join the rest of Capella's constellation of Earth-observing small sats. HV battery discharge, nominal. We're coming up now on the battery hot swap for the second stage Rutherford engine. This is an action we perform to make sure the engine has ample battery power to continue firing all the way until orbit. You should be able to see the depleted batteries fall away in place of the fully charged third pack shortly, which will, which will be our visual confirmation that battery hot swap has been completed. Got it, it's nominal, 200 seconds remaining. HVB battery discharge nominal, approaching hot stop in roughly 30 seconds. down. Battery jettison confirmed. Confirm hot swaps. That was the call that battery hot swap is confirmed. Now, last launch, we introduced some changes to our high voltage battery system. And that hardware is part of our Gen 2 batteries for the Rutherford engine. We redesigned the batteries to introduce more resilience into the system and to improve its electrical performance. Seven minutes and five seconds into the mission, hearing nominal calls here from our operators in Rocket Lab Mission Control, and all remains healthy with Capella's satellites on board. If we can bring up the propellant overlays there, let's see we go, we'll see we've got about 27% propellant remaining in our stage two burn. Still about two minutes to go until the end of that burn, but as you can see, the nozzle continues to glow hot and bright as we approach seven minutes and 30 seconds into flight. HV battery discharge holding nominal. Uh, T plus seven minutes and 48 seconds into flight and Electron's stage two burn continues nominally. We're getting some beautiful views of the darkness of space from the onboard camera as we make our way around the globe ahead of orbital insertion, which should occur just off of the coast of Antarctica. As we've been listening in to Mission Control, our GNC operator has confirmed guidance is nominal and we're about 45 seconds away from second engine cutoff or seco, followed by kick stage separation. We're looking for that magic number there, just over 27,000 kilometres per hour, which marks orbital velocity. Guidance is in terminal, 20 seconds remaining. Seco confirmed. Stage three separation confirmed. Seco confirmed across the nets, as you can tell from the nozzle on your screen, as you could tell from it getting cold on, um, as the engine shut down as planned. The kick stage has also successfully been released from the second stage and is now entering what we call the coast phase. For the next 40 or so minutes, the kick stage will be in an elliptical orbit around Earth before the Curie engine ignites and raises the kick stage's perigee to put us into a circular orbit. 
From here, we'll deploy Capella's Acadia satellite into its place in the constellation. And just like that, it doesn't take long to get to orbit once you've got 60,000 pounds of thrust behind you.